Welcome back, my friends, to TNO. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, of course, and we are playing as the Empire of Japan so far. As you can probably tell, because this is like number seven or eight or six in the campaign, but regardless, the siege mentality. There's a saying in the cities Your secret is known by two. Such a proverb could not emphasize the omnipresence of the Kenpai Tai enough, with informants at every corner, wiretaps on home telephones, and suspicious men stalking the dubious. The oppressive gaze of the state rests heavily on everyone's shoulders. The populace has been terrorized into obedience and dread inquiries were no longer being necessary when the public had fostered a culture of awe and confession. Everyone knew someone who had seen a raid. They may have seen officers crash through the wooden doors of neighbors on their commute, or gaze with a shock through the kitchen window at the beaten and bloody bodies of nearby residents as they were dragged from their homes. As ghastly as these were, every raid begins with a phone call or a tip from an informant, the responsible voice of the public, as propaganda demanded. Not to tell would be treason against the Emperor, a crime warranting unending agony. Riding in a sunlight-starved concrete cell, the, the raw fear of the Ken Pai Tai was an ordered chaos and the oppressive air had morphed itself into a unique hostility in Japan. Neighbor told on neighbor, brother told on brother. Familial squabbles could be solved with one call and that single tip could grant the unsuspecting target a doom that death would be preferable to. The d truth is as deadly as a sword, perhaps because this could be worked around. Lower party unity, you get more political power. I think probably truth is deadly as a sword. I'm not really sure, sure which one to choose, but we're just going to choose that one. And I asked you guys yesterday a couple comments whether whether which focuses we should do, especially with this and with this. So keep all key industries or assert resource dominance. Now, at the time of this recording, the votes may change later on, but at the time of me recording this, the one that we're going to choose for both of these, or between these two, is keep hold of key industries. While the long-term goal of the Admiral's administration should be the greater liberalization of the Japanese economy, liberalizing too many sectors at once would lead to great economic uncertainty and market shocks across the sphere. Hence, it would be wise for administration to keep significant spheres or shares in several key industries, namely the defense, steel, and petrol, petrochemical sectors. In addition, Minister Nakasone has a means of keeping the reform bureaucrats and the military on our side as we gradually liberalize more and more of our economy, namely in increasing the production capabilities of the aforementioned industries through the increased R&D into new technologies such as automation and line production, influenced by the efficiency of Toyota's production methods. Turning the reform bureaucrats' principles against them in our management of the economy could also do well or could also do well to take the wind out of their sails. That's a very good thing. Very, very good. So right now, we have minus 35 billion in out. I know deficit, not bad. The growth is not looking very good. The Nagasaki Accord signed, bringing peace to Vietnam. Wait. Nagasaki Accords. Um. I was not told that we would hold Accords here, but okay. Why not? Why not? Cool. How are we doing? We still want to welcome Italy to the national diet, but apparently, we can't do that yet, which is kind of sucky. I guess our old action is still in progress, but it'd be kind of cool if we could see that in progress. I mean, I guess not, or I don't know. We'll see what happens. Keep on with the key industries, regardless. A question of labor. Ramusha, Maruta, Chinese, Indonesian, Korean, all work for the benefit of Japan. From the coal mines of Kyushu to Nissan's factories in Manchuria, labor, forced labor, of course, and participatory, has been crucial to the betterment of the Japanese economy and people. However, with a modernizing economy comes with new challenge for our, using our labor pool. Mechanization and automation necessitates a greater need to modernize the skills of our labor pool. We can consider the reduction of our alliance on forced labor simultaneously reducing our, the descent within the sphere, impro improving our public image, both within Japan and without. We should not keep our, out our fingers of requisitioned labor entirety. Their contributions to jobs the average Japanese person would not touch are still crucial for the time being in addition. Keeping labor costs on the low definitely wouldn't on the low end, definitely wouldn't hurt our standing with the Zaibatsu and Ka Kairitsu. After all, with the presence of our security force, the striking laborers will have little luck or leverage, which is a good thing for your average worker. Or not even for the average worker, for the average citizen, that's a good thing. Right now, we're still pretty weak. Public approval is not too bad, actually. Not too bad. Another division, don't mind if we do. And we'll throw you right there. Go ahead and train, that'd be very nice. We have a whole one army XP, which is okay. If I do remember correctly, I did move things around here a little bit more, so this way we could be making more things. But we could actually probably use more military factories. I'm not going to take anything off of that. We could lower maybe one off of here. We still need to make a little bit more basic artillery. Support equipment's not bad. Let's go down to there with four level, level four. Artillery is going to be looking better. Improve modern interrogation tech methods, huh? A little bit of lag, it looked like there, or something. Let's pause it to do this real quick. 
Not sure what sound that came out of my body, but whatever. And let's see. Shiguru Hasegawa. Very cool. <clears throat> now, I asked you guys whether we should do this one or we should keep our fingers on the scale. And you guys, at the time of this recording, said that we should do ensure access across the sphere. Zaibatsu and the Karetsu feed the sphere with goods ranging from electronics to the latest automobiles. Their triumphs are a sign of Japan's economic prowess and prosperity. In turn, however, they also need to be fed themselves with a steady diet of labor and natural resources. Along with Zaibatsu and the Karetsu to maintain their free hand over labor requisitioning across the sphere would definitely keep our administration in their good books, in addition to maintaining the temporary approval of conservatives. <clears throat> This would not look good in the eyes of the public, though. The progressives wish to curtail the usage of forced labor, and the ultra-nationalists wish for the state to have a greater say in the usage of forced labor. In addition, we could also run the risk of angering our collaborators within the sphere. Exploiting for other people for our own gain is not the most ideal or agreeable thing there is. But their growth will increase, which is not bad. Labor and the state. Oh, we don't meet the requirements. Oh, always false. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so we don't have to even do that one. Okay. Okay, so we actually choose it through a decision. That's not bad. That's not actually really cool. So, Tagagi sat in his office upright in his seat, surrounded by papers freckling or freckled with grass and statistics sprawled across his desk. They detailed the forest labor system and its recent performance across the co-prosperity sphere. He tapped out his pen on the desk a few times and reached over to the folder styled Health and Life Expectancy Showa 36-37, to 37, flicking through the relevant numbers. His face remained stiff and unbothered as he scribbled down copied information, glancing back at the folder a few times. Instrumental for the construction and maintenance of infrastructure during the Great East Asian War, the Rumusha Penal servants now assemble goods and erected buildings for the corporations, with the Zaibatsus hiring hundreds, even thousands at a time. They work mindlessly as slaves to their own crimes for to their own crimes, and their labor was a redemption in the service of the Empire. Takagi grouped the folders to one corner of his desk and reached for another sheet of paper to begin writing it to his cabinet. He debated the benefits of regulation with adequate protections that the laborers could work harder for longer and see real value in their service. However, he did acknowledge it to the contrary. Leaving the laborers to the hungry Zaibatsus and letting the market decide who was fittest in the servitude of the country and who would perish seeking such forgiveness. Regu regulations that work so far? A market-based approach would reduce some burdens on the state? Yeah. Yeah, that would probably be pretty good for us. Very nice. If you want to read about this one, go right ahead. <clears throat> it's okay. It's not great, but there you go. And solidifying our practice. Modern times call for modern industries, which require modern operational practices. We have spent a good deal of time ensuring that the industry of the home islands operates according to the highest level standards. Now, new safety measures have been implemented, including thorough examinations of machines and tools before use, and extensive training to better handle workplace accidents. Much work has also been done to ensure that the industrial sector operates with full energy and production efficiency. While efforts at home have been proved fruitful, the new practices have yet to be implemented across the co-prosperity sphere. It's now time to do just that. Once all of the AG utilizes our new methods, the sphere will see a leap of economic progress. Let's hope so. Because last time, we thought that we would be doing very, very well in terms of a Japanese economic golden age. So hopefully, things don't go poorly for us. Anything here? Nope. Air doctrine? We're doing two aircraft doctrines. Heavy aircraft? Oh, we'll give you that one, because why not? Why not? Very good. I have a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm in a very wet water bottle. I probably should have dried it off earlier. Oh well. So pretty divided here. Authoritarian democracy. They are still getting some more port every day. That's good. Point nine six is obviously not much, but hey, what can you do about it? It's very weird. I'm building up the infrastructure before we're building up all the civilian factories again. Very odd. But oh well. Let's see. Good, good, good. And after this, we should probably do this stuff, but I want to do more economic stuff. Loosening the price controls. Wartime economics demanded strong government intervention to give the economy towards the needs of the nation, which meant means one means of which is price controls. Throughout the Chuo Buka Tosai Kyo Yoko Kagai, wartime price floors and ceilings have assured tight tighter government control over the prices of essential goods, but in the process have also inevitably created black markets both in rural and urban areas proliferating crime. In addition, the presence of price controls have also created a resource crisis within our military and defense industries as the Army and Navy compete for raw materials such as aluminum, which is also having adverse effects on the civilian industry. While dismantling the legislation itself would be a fairly straightforward task, given our support from both the conservatives and the Ketoites, we would also have to dedicate police and Kenpai Thai resources to tracking and shutting down black markets. Nice, our GDP will receive a small boost, which is not bad. That's not why I'm doing it. I just want to get through this side, the economic, economic side, a little quicker. Good, both going there. Heavy aircraft, it doesn't really matter to me. Just want to make sure we... Spy planes, those are nice. I don't, we'll get those maybe a little bit later. Let's grab some advanced drop tanks. Now, I know we could be doing stuff here, but every time I take an action using my political power, we lose, like, support and stuff, and I don't want to lose support anymore. Actually, hmm. 
We have 0.9. Actually, that increased support. I don't want to lower that one though, so. Well, maybe we'll keep doing that then. Cool. Government cipher stuff. That's fine with me. Because we are booming through this. Wow, we're actually running out of things to build. Uh, that's not good. Infrastructure, construction speed. I'm glad we're doing this. That, this is really, really helpful, actually. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. So nice to see. Only minus 27. What's going on? The three sacred treasures. Electronics. Of all the nations stood shoulder to shoulder in the co-prosperity sphere, the Empire of Japan carries the torch of scientific advancement to guide the liberated younger brothers of Asia into the future. The mighty nation that wields great scientific and educational achievements from the development of ore refining mineral extraction technologies to the mass production of modern medical and surgical equipment and continues to use its technological grace to, to develop the younger nation surrounding it. Leading from Tokyo, advancements in the fields of manufacturing, computing, and machinery have developed a culture of innovation and determination to modernize the economy of this empire. The improvement and refinement of technologies from the Greater East Asia War, as well as the progress from new feats of research in the few years since, has prided Japan as a leader of the electronic and technological development in the co-prosperity sphere and among one of the greatest competitors internationally. Moreover, advancements in the military engineering since the Greater East Asian War proved or improved Japan's ability to defend the sphere from foreign incursion. Tokyo's arsenal consists of a multitude of modern arms, from colossal ships with some of the most advanced heavy weapon systems in the world, to small arms meticulously calibrated to withstand the hardest of climates. Furthermore, the Japanese arsenal's ICBMs and modern nuclear warheads stand as testimony to the Empire's determination to defend its territory and support the brother nations of Asia in face of foreign aggression and expansion. Modernization has always been important to Japan, and that's good. Um, let's see, we have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, I think it's time to cut down a little bit more. There you go. If we need to boost it back up, we can. Let's see where we're at now. One, two, three, four. We're still at nine some. <clears throat> still at nine some. So that's still not bad. Can we build anything else anywhere else? Uh, yes, we still have some more opportunities around here, which is good. Very, very good. But hey, get the construction budget a little bit more. We'll do okay. We've still got places to build. Hawaii is still good. Jap load trees, dot 42, uh, load trees, wait, um, just in case, let's get to this one first before we click on that, so, the wise man, Nakasone. Sometimes I just want to blow my brains out, this is one of the times, I can barely think that last night has been so long and there was so much work to do, now, early in the morning, I've been dragged out of this boardroom to listen to my cabinet. Kido has hijacked the meeting because of how, of course he has, to defend his whiny, incessant complaints, oh, how I wish I could tell him I could do not, just do not care. My premiership is in his vehicle to get whatever he wants, and he wants what exactly? I can't finger... Land a finger on his pulse. His goals are beyond me, but whatever they are, I have no interest in fulfilling them. Out of the ear-piercing cacophony of Kido's rant, dulcet tones ring out. Nakasona interjected. They could be annoyed at times, or annoying at times, but anything would be better than the goddamn Kido. He slips over a bundle of papers and proposals he's been cooking up, no doubt. If I may, my apologies, Kido, but <clears throat> I would like to bring up the subject of new economic reform that have, I've been researching for the past few weeks. Of course, Basically, the premise is that we loosen price controls, and the market will use extra room in order to situate on the, on the most consumer market-friendly prices themselves. Surprisingly, after looking into it, such a policy would yield an uptick in gross domestic product yet unseen in our administration. Yeah, no, it wouldn't, but <clears throat> after seeing a couple sessions with Nakasona, his free market leanings have been rubbing off on me. I'm sure he's done all his research, as anyone interested in price controls. I rub my eyes and write my signature on his proposal. Consider it a test of what could be or a hint what's to come. I look back to Kido and my mistake hits me. His eyes flicker between me and Nakasone, all while he trembles. He is seething with an envious rage. Quickly, as he's opening his mouth, I interject. Now, cat. Okay. Did anything unlock here? Maybe, maybe not. Cool. That's weird that we got the event for... Chap low trees, but okay, whatever. Cool. Lightening the punishment clause. We get more population, less recruitable population. We lose stability, we get more research speed, and get a lot less free repair, we get more base stability. The national mobilization allowed 18 clauses specifically pertaining to the punishment of those who violate its restrictions. Our law enforcement units have been done well to uphold said laws, but ever since the war ended, they may have done too well. A continued fear of reprisals and prosecution from the Toko have generated an atmosphere of fear and uncertainty fermenting our nest amongst the populace. It would, be it would be wise for us to ease the punishment clauses, the, the results of which could be a definite boost to our approval amongst the public. The Toko resources and manpower that could be freed from a relaxed policy at home could be better deployed overseas, especially in Manchukong, China. Once this return to normalcy is complete, Japanese society will flourish in the material and spiritual glory of our palace, or of our place in the sun and achieve the desired balance between freedom to flourish and respect for the rule of law. <clears throat> Very good. And this coffee isn't bad either. Let's see, we have a whole 11.72%. Not bad. Minus 30 billion, not bad. Could be better, but you know, we can only slash so much from the construction budget. What else do we need, necessarily, from 
our budgets. Well, eventually. We could probably put some air bases around here, just in case Japan gets a little uppity. That'd be good. Taiwan as well. Probably around here as well. So we've got plenty of stuff to build still. Hey, over 400 billion. Not bad. Black Siberian Army unifies Central Siberia. Well, that's not good. You guys go down there. You guys go there. You guys go there. You guys go there. You guys go there. We don't have a lot of air bases on the home islands of Japan, which is a little surprising in my opinion. Cool. And let's go and do this too. So actually, how is the budget now? Are they boosted GDP? No, we, well, we didn't get really boosted GDP, but that's looking a little better. Not really any better at all, but the GDP is looking okay. So, expand the education ministry. <clears throat> Compulsory education has been a key driver of Japanese growth and modernization ever since the Meiji Restoration. Japanese education has focused strongly on the enrichment of the scientific and developmental knowledge and viewed with a sense of strong, unbreakable national spirit. <clears throat> It would be wise for us to redeploy the saved funds from cutting down on other government expenses and the other sectors to expand the education ministry. The expansion of the education ministry would be focused on increasing educational quality and training, especially in rural areas, as well as branching out to the Japanese communities throughout the sphere so that these loyal sons and daughters of Nihon could be on par with the comp compatriots back home. In addition, we would also spare some expenses for a commission to rejuvenate the national syllabi to fit the renowned, renewed strength and totality of Japan in this post-war era. That'd probably be good. Nice, nice that. Good. Keep cutting it down. That is very bueno. Let's come over here. Nope, can't do that. Yep, that's fine. <clears throat> hey, you got 2%. Not bad. Keep cutting people down. That'd be good. Even Ikeda has some support. Which is okay. Let's see. When is this one coming next? 11 days. 10, 11 days. That's not bad. Alright, so just in case, we've maxed that out. Military austerity. Don't think I... We, we, I'm pretty sure we'll keep that, so... Just in case, you never know if we might end up in a conflict with the New Zealanders or the Aussies. Especially the Americans, so we gotta watch out for those guys, too. Fluctuating quite a bit. Not bad. 360? Never enough. Never, ever enough. Cool. After this one, patriotism at home, nationalism abroad. And we'll do that one soon. While it's necessary for us to promote the ideals of our Japanese nationhood and patriotism into our citizens, it's also true that promoting the ideals of Japanese nationhood, uh, Japanese values, and Japanese culture within the sphere is a necessary step for us to consolidate our cultural guidance within Asia. Starting from our own citizens, we ought to redefine the national syllabi to include lessons about the benevolence of Japan towards the sphere and how pan-Asianism can only be achieved through Japanese leadership. In addition, the Ministry of Education is also looking at the possibility of increasing overseas education investments, provided that they allow Japanese educators to hold advisory roles in redefining and implementing compulsory education. Japanese customs and practices such as singing of Kimagayo and the compulsory Japanese language lessons would be a must for these education investments. One day, Asia will be fully re realized the benevolence of the Japanese hand. We get a wave of nationalism, more approval population factor, division defense on core territory, and public approval does increase. Expand the Ministry of Education. Zayabatsu Black Friday. Is that not good? Because Black Friday here in the States is pretty good sometimes. So, I'm not really sure what that does, but we'll see what happens. Let's go and do this one. Pop-up attacks. Nice. And come to artillery. Nice. Go cool. up the wave that could have been. Takagi stared at the brick and marble front side of a long, stuffy building. The institution, the Imperial Japanese Naval Academy, serves as its home and learning environment for several years. The paint was wearing, the stones eroding, and the t uh, roof tiles breaking off. It was a monument to simple, idealistic past which in reality never existed. Walking through its front doors, Takagi was sent on a nostalgia, nostalgia trip. As a young man who believed that he could transform the IJM from the inside, he who would go on to see his innocence and na naivety ripped from him in the fire and blood of the Empire. It was in those classrooms that he was taught absolute discipline and the strategies of naval warfare. He remember the long dead teachers who saw to it that he would grow up in an honorable servant of the Emperor. It was in those cafeterias that he ate rice for years, or ate salted rice for years on end, to train his instinctual desires. Looking over the walls, he spotted photos of his class 50 years ago. Young men, old friends, smiling towards the future. Some died in the East Asia War, most drifted apart. There was a summer place more so than he remembered. While examining a model of the battleship Yamato, Takagi noted, or noticed a figure in the empty halls of the academy, a janitor mopping the floors. Looking over him, he saw a slow, cyclic movements. Takagi felt a strange sensation. This man, whoever he was, reminded him of his younger self, but a younger self that he could never feel the glory of the Empire nor the hope of social mobility. <clears throat> This man could have been the next great admiral, or at least a dedicated sailor. Instead, this janitor, who looks to be in his 30s, had a life ended right here in these halls. Takagi walked out, his head down, as dedicated as he was to, the, to those 50 years ago. Educational opportunities would be expanded, and he would make sure that his new cabinet saw through no more languishing. He had the power, and it was time to do what he could only wish for as a young man. The little man is still a man. Nice. Primary schooling is replaced with secondary schooling. More research speed, factory output, and production efficiency capacity. Really good. Really, really awesome. Not bad. 
Of course, GDP is still going down, but hopefully we can fix this. Hopefully we get events later on that we that we can fix. I mean, yeah, we're getting negative deficit stuff, so we can we're doing okay, but still. Very nice. So what's the next one would be done in four days? All right. Advanced drop tank. We'll probably go with not something here. Light aircraft, helicopter stuff. We can do that stuff. That's not really necessary. Naval doctrine. We might as well do blue water navy. All right. Might as well get our naval doctrine done. Next up, the new nor normal. With reforms being released or released, the choking grip of wartime policy on the Japanese state and people. Our citizens no longer live in fear of being whisked away for the slightest misstep, and our light industry no longer suffers under a wartime economic regime that starves the citizenry. Everything except for the final steps that were released the last few bonds. Japan's about to enter a new age of prosperity and gleaming successes. All that we have to do is pull the switch. Hey, get more daily political power. That's great. Uh, so Indonesia's still fighting. And so Karno doesn't really like us that much. And we don't... I mean, we don't really care for him that much, but... It's better for them to remain in the sphere than anything else, so... Yeah, cause... Do we... We did finish the death of duty, so yeah, that's good. The next one up is in four days. Air order tasking. We'll do variable attack patterns, huh? Oh, railroad privatization, so we can no longer build stuff, and that's fine. Cool. Fine with me. The new normal. How we do emphasize stability. Our plan reforms to the national mobilization law are far-reaching and potentially destabilizing, and our opponents in the diet are all aware of it. Rocking the boat and causing instability would be a death knell for the most administrations, but ours is no different. We must convince the Diet that our plans won't cause too much trouble too quickly. We could draw on better members of the Diet, such as Minister Kitobot, to lobby and convince both houses of what the Prime Minister Takagi wants is merely to return to the status quo antebellum, the golden era of Taisho democracy, and not to overturn any long standing institutions. <clears throat> In addition, the die would be swayed through compromising on our reforms to the military. In particular, we would choose to go easy on the reductions to conscription. Cool. <clears throat> Born you billing, still not bad. There was something I wanted to do here. I forget. Oh, that's right. This stuff. Not this stuff. This stuff. Kaya? Kaya? Hey, 2%. Wow, it just, it just died instantly. Wow. That is nuts. Paranoia is very... Mine is 0.75. Okay, if it's not bad, then don't touch it, right? Now, that's a 42 billion. Um, we're still keeping the economy afloat, which is not bad. I like that. Ease press regulations. We lose political power, stability, less more support. Lower recruitment laws. We lose, wow, we lose a lot of political power. We get more daily political power, organization. We get less recruitable population. Better division recovery rate, more stability, worse support, construction speed, factory output. Replace large spending with medium spending. Okay, let's do that one. Conscription, the path of serving our nation. As a means of a young man earning his own pride, but also as a chokehold on the future of the Japanese society. While the Admiral, a military man himself, has his own opinions regarding to conscription, Ministers Nakasone and Kido have made their stances on easing the conscription laws quite easier. And there will be little opposition from the moderates, liberals, and conservatives in the diet either. While support from the bureaucrats and the militaries would be much less, we will be able to leverage the financial and behind-the-scenes influence of the Zaibatsuns and Keretsu to secure enough for both. After all, fewer people in the military equates to more people in vocational schools and more skilled workers for the labor pool. <clears throat> of course, to compromise with the hardliners and perhaps even the admiral himself, conscription laws will not be entirely abolished. Japan needs a strong military, military still, especially amidst the uncertainty in the global geopolitical atmosphere as of late. The Admiral speaks. Mr. Amari sighed as he looked out at the sea. He had served his time when he was younger as a surgeon in the Great East Asian War, or Greater East Asia War, working through the just, just jungle, jungles of Borneo with his men. By no means a perfect time, he smiled fondly at the memories of adventure and challenges the daily marches brought. <coughs> when the war was done, he found himself back in Mutsu again in the cold winds from the sea, a godsend. <coughs> But a, his mind strayed back to the tropics again, though not because he was returning to the battlefield. Rather, the younger Amari was sent to be, was to be sent there. Mere weeks after he finished university, he went back indoors and turned on the radio, hoping to hear something good from Tokyo about the system that had unwillingly dragged his son into the same pit he chose to enter. <coughs> and today, Prime Minister Takagi has suggested a repeal to the long-held mobilization law to usher in an end to what he calls a war long ended, yet still a long fought for. No more days looking beyond the sea. Hey, ten percent more stability, nice. We actually have maxed out stability. So surprisingly, we still get more weekly change, which is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Kido. Oh, now we've. I. Oh, wait, hold on. Kido's working with us, probably actually. So that's why I was minus two percent. Um. My bad. At least we got high approval from the public. Ah, uh, see, minus two percent goes up. Not bad. No worries. And how about these ghost ships that we're making? We still get... Oh wait, are these... Okay, so that's not a ghost ship. Uh, this one's actually one we wanted to make anyway, so... Does anyone not have stuff that they need? Oh, yeah. 
You guys could be right there. Kaya, I don't really want to lower you some more. Then. Cool. Goodbye. And grab that one. No, we can't. Mm hmm. Armor stuff? Why not? Very nice. Anything over here? Keep slashing it. We're doing pretty good on that. Pretty darn well. Five days left. Nice. 2%. Yeah. So we got to do Kaya and maybe even Miki. Maybe for the independence. Maybe. But regardless, ease press regulations. While establishment news outlets such as Ashi Asahi, Sim Shimbun, and Yomirui Shimbun have been reliable mainstays for controlling what information the government would like the public to hear. Unauthorized press outlets have been simmering pots full of supposed more truthful in insights into Japanese life and more informally Japanese politics, while we're rightfully stifled by the national mobilization law through distribution and licensing regulations and restrictions. We could look into easing some of these press regulations if we wanted to. Naturally, we should be able to shore up our public support through easing these press regulations, but there's also a second less apparent purpose in deregulating the press. Namely, the purpose of weaponizing it against our opponents in the diet, be it through candid interviews, honest audits of corruption, or even some sens sensationalized news pieces. After all, media coverage and exposure is a double-edged sword. Oh, we'll get some more stability, which is nice and all. We don't really need it. We lost a lot of political power, but... Meh. It's alright. That is A-OK -okay right now. Wave of nationalism. You better believe that there's, it's there. So when can we do this again? Actually, let's see if we can lower Miki. Because we have 0% now. I mean, whatever we do, it can't hurt us that much more, right? So. Okay, so he's working with us. My bad. Oopsie! It's minus 2%. That's okay. We still have 14.5%, so that's not too bad. Down here, not bad. And after easing press regulations, positive propaganda. I love propaganda. Happy 1967, though. The loosening of press regulations naturally comes with strings attached, while the popularization of radio and TV media is evolving at an ever-increasing pace, allowing broadcast news and entertainment to propagate throughout almost every home in Japan. In return for the increases in improved media outlets, it would be un it would be wise for us to propose the broadcasting of propaganda in some time slots. This could be radio broadcasts or television segments about how the sphere is prospering under a benevolent hand, movies which extol the positive spirit of Japanese nationalism, or more. All this is a new benevolent form of positive propaganda which portrays a pan-Asian ideal. Hopefully this will help calm dissent amongst our population. Hopefully. Might not happen though, but hopefully. Oh, it's still going down. We're still cutting this by quite a bit. Minimum annual debt interest payments. Wow. Nope. Actually, how's this looking now? We're building a lot of air bases. We are running out of things to build. Any more areas? No? Okay. Well, that's the case. There you go. Slash a little bit more. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine some. Not bad. Oh, now we have minus two percent again. Oh, well, whatever. It's getting us more support, which is good. A better society for all. <clears throat> Our efforts to demilitarize the home islands have had an immense impact on society. Before, during the era of siege mentality, it was a during it was a daunting task to live a life not influenced by military power. Now it seems that a better, more freer society is beginning to emerge from the old. Where once the young and inspired Japanese youth would be sent off to serve in the Imperial Armed Forces, men are now being able to dedicate themselves to improving Japan through science, emerging industries, and new technologies. Relaxations on criminal law and press restrictions have eased the fears of the populace, especially for those who remember the days of the Taisho era. While these very palpable changes are significant, especially for the general population, we cannot now lie back and consider our own work done. The siege mentality lasts for decades and is only now starting to end. Nothing that ingrained into society can be done away with in weeks. <clears throat> my apologies about my voice. Our mandate has reached another important milestone, but it is far from fully enforced. More public approval? Don't mind if we do. Hey, boo-boo. Don't mind if we get more public approval. Very, very good. And that's only that's less than three weeks now. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. National debt, we're doing really well on it. GDP, yeah, man. Hmm. Hopefully we have another focus tree after this. I hope we do. Wow. Western Russia looks terrible. Samara, what... What's going on here? Are you driving just to Arkhangelsk? Arkhangelsk, yeah. Actually, that's something I'm going to invest in here. Keep it up. Save flow a little bit more. Investor Society for All. I see anything here that could be done. Nope. Alrighty then. Now we got to choose probably a coalition of equals. 
<clears throat> Entering a proper coalition with Ikeda and Ikido would be the safer route for our blocks to survive and die. A broad united front against the militaries and the hard line, as well as might be better for our long-term survival, it almost certainly means that we will have to water down some of our reformist policies. The very least it could do is that Ikeda's gargantuan block would almost certainly assure ensure a significant majority for us to pass our bills. However, we may need to end up in a position where we can see too much in exchange for too little. Lose political power, get more stability. Conservative and liberal uh, factions power increases somewhat, and we get more stability. Yeah. Lose bit of power, whatever. Miki. So, how many guys do we have? We have 70. And we now have 73. So, I'll keep doing that since it doesn't really hurt us that badly, so might as well, right? Very good, very good, very good. And stealth integration? Awesome. Oh, crap. More free civilian factor. What do we do with this? Can we build stuff here? Um, I'm not sure what to do with you guys. I guess I could get c construction spending even more since like we're running out of places to build it in so um i can make these ports even bigger i suppose because i love big ports and i cannot lie might as well right if that's the case we're gonna slash it by one more level there you go better armor cool it's not it's unfortunate that it's not quite 1970 so we can get better or research the ability to get more tanks and stuff off the coast of the Aleutians. The Aoroba Maru was entering its fourth day in the waters on Atu Island, tr trawling for shrimp in the frigid waters of the Arctic Ocean. Their surroundings had been shrouded in fog for hours of a pea soup that made no visibility beyond a few ships' lengths. Captain Ipe Yamada clutched his cup of boiling hot sencha preciously as he appeared through the bridge windows, his breath fogging the glass. His crew were pull busy pulling the past night's nets in. His responsibility was to keep watch, trying to make sure that they weren't at risk of drifting into a ghost ship, or worse, drifting out of the Japanese waters here on the far eastern frontier of the Japanese Empire. Speaking of the devil. Speaking of the devil, Captain Yamada rubbed his eyes as a shadow rose out of the fog and then took the form of a similar fishing vessel, vessel as it drifted closer. He reached for his binoculars, the American flag hung from the rear of the boat, and Yamada could see a similar lone figure on the bridge staring back at him. What is the American boat doing in Japanese waters? Get off the coast, off the coast of the Lucians? Oh boy. Oh boy, no, 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 shrimp boat. No, no. <clears throat> well, that's not good. That's really not good. America tell us to turn around. <clears throat> Japanese vessel, this is the Alaskan catch of four days out of Ulan, Alaska. You are fishing in American waters. Turn your vessel around and leave immediately. Captain Ipe Yamada struggled to understand the burst, sudden bursts of English from the radio on the bridge. His crew had all finished pulling up the nets and were now manning the stations elsewhere, bringing the engines back up to speed and preparing to get underway. He looked at the navigational charts, warm but still current. He checked his plotted course, the product of an unchanging routine observed meticulously each day, and he was convinced. We are in Japanese waters. Americans should not be here, he announced to his crew. The younger man laughed at the arrogance and stupidity of the Americans. <clears throat> we must tell them to leave our waters immediately, one ventured. You know English, another, another asked. Suddenly the bridge fell aside. Captain Yamada considered his remaining options. We'll find another place to fish. Uh, well, we can ram them. They'll understand that. Um, you know what? I don't think so. We can find another place to fish. There's plenty of places up here near the Aleutians. So, ramming them? I mean, yeah, we don't want to cause World War Three, especially because we're, we're demilitarizing. I mean, this will hurt probably our national prestige, stability, and stuff like that, but I don't want thermonuclear war right now. And... You know what? Maybe those maps are not actually current. You know? You never know. <clears throat> Besides, we still own the ports down here. I forgot about these ports. That's right. Blue Water Navy. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm not going hardcore Japan. When I play Japan again someday, especially playing as Kido, we'll definitely, like, tell them we'll, we will ram them. So, this will be cool and all. We're probably going to go with the modern Kantai Kessen. So, this is what the IJN used successfully. So, we'll probably use this one, so... Coalition of Equals. Collaborate with Ikeda. Manasuke Masanosuke Ikeda is an implacable man. A strict conservative, a man with a temper, and most importantly, the leader of the most powerful faction in the Diet. Well, I wouldn't say that right now. While the liberals and their conservatives may not get along on all policy related fronts, by this point we are united in the purpose of curtailing the reform bureaucrats and the militarists. We will proceed to seek his cooperation in the Diet to pass some crucial legislation pertaining to the curtailing of militarism, a relatively secure platform following which we can move on to more crucial matters. <clears throat> there you go, that's better. Shrimp boat, nope. No shrimp boat activities here. No, thank you. Zimbabwe's doing a little better. This is getting even bigger and bigger, which we like, like, like. And I'm not going to hurt my public approval. So, no, thank you. Oh, uh, I was just looking. There's any more fighters. Let's see, Anti-Tank is doing pretty darn well. Oh, the Divine Mandate has beat the Tridents by Kalos people. 
Oh, look at that. Now we got the Divine, Divine Mandate versus the Siberian Free Territory, while Western Russia is still sucking its thumb. Not bad. Inf motorized equipment is looking pretty good. Infantry equipment is looking pretty good. Support equipment is looking pretty good. Not bad. So let's lower this by two, maybe. We're doing pretty well on artillery. Maybe we can make some main battle tanks. We got. We really should spread things out a little bit better than this. Variable attack patterns. I don't want to lower that anymore, though. Yeah. Hey, at least we're making... Actually, go down to one. Go down to one for now, too. Because we want to at least get all of these filled out, too, so. Cool. And we shall do... Ooh, joint air operations. Oh, we can do both. Ah, air fuel consumption. Actually, that's really good because the Air Force takes so much fuel. Holy crud. Collaborate with the Kido. Rehabilitating Kido. Uh, actually, let's do that one after we do this one. So, the differences between our liberal bloc, the conservatives, and Kido's royalists are vast. From economics to militarism and even how do we ought to govern the vast prosperity and riches of the sphere. However, for a coalition to push forward with their own reforms and to put an end to the influence of a militarist, we have to unite in our common opposition to the excesses of military and the Edo administration, even at the cost of some of our more radical reforms. With this in mind, we can finally start to expand our grand coalition to include not only the liberals, but also those conservatives who still possess dignity and the royalists. Very cool. Oh, there goes our recruitable population. Oh, and I forgot to do off-screen. What is Germany doing? Oh, you know what? I'll probably unlock some of the focuses for them. Oh, no, they're still doing it. Okay, good. I just want to make sure that they're still doing it, so. Challenging the I USN and IJN? So this is, wow. Wow, that's a huge focus tree. So they're locked behind War Plan B. So they need to take out a lot of places then. Yeah. Masters of the world. Yeah, I'll definitely probably make sure that they can get through everything at least. Oh, cool. Oh, Omsk is still there. I still need to play Omsk sometime. Oh, Collapse Authority. That sucks for them. Sucks to be them. Nice. Let's see. Kido. Support. Minus 0 0.03, but whatever. We got more officer support for now, so that's good. Alright, next up will be Ending Sectarian. Intrigue. Uh, let's do that one. Rehabilitating Kido. Kochi Kido is a man with a mixed legacy. On one hand, our liberalizing, uh, our liberalizing cause is taking cues from his planned depolitization of the military after the war. On the other hand, he left office in a dismal state with heavy disapproval from the militarists and the reform bureaucrats. Now he sought cooperation with their faction in the Diet, and it would be ridiculous not to take up his offer. His connections with the Imperial family and his house of and the house of peers will be crucial in shoring up support. In exchange, it would be wise for the Admiral to rehabilitate his image. This can be achieved by acknowledging his efforts in the Diet speeches, Yakusan Kai gazettes, and newspaper and interviews. Hopefully the old man will live to see his redemption in the eyes of the Japanese people, settling their differences. A hotel room sat high above the skyline of Tokyo. A grand building meant to serve, to house and host dignitaries, ministers, and politicians of all sorts from throughout the Empire. The Prime Minister's rooms include a single room customized for his own needs. Prime Minister Takagi found the room distractingly ornate, but it provided a place to invite Representative Kido for a number of private discussions. The two men led some of the most liberal cliques in the party, but even then, their allies would spar with each other. The old admiral had his own scores to settle with Kido's wildly unpopular plans, and Kolchai found, or Koichi found Sochi's policies to cater too much to the pals in the navy and the karetsu. Yet the two would need to work together and still get another faction into the growing coalition to secure a majority in the lower house. The unlikely target was Ikeda's conservatives were not so reactionary that they were all guaranteed to dig themselves into the opposition, but compromises would have to be made. While the two spent the evening figuring out their approaches, the great question remained of Kido's most radical reforms. Could Ikeda be brought to the to, into the coalition without destroying their own faction, forcing Takagi to search for another ally? It would only work, it seemed, if all three re Ringleaders were treated as equals, even if one was prime minister. The bickering may never stop until the party has collapsed. Hey, we'll see what happens. Not bad. How is construction going? Not bad either. Plenty enough to build for now, which is good. Of course, we got enough radar for now to last a while. Get some on the Japanese, or the Japanese, the islands around here and up here as well. <clears throat> Since it doesn't really matter what we build at this point, because we can't build any more civilian factories, build a lot of radar. Knowledge is power. And we're going to have a lot of knowledge. No matter where it is in the ocean. Because the Pacific is a mighty, mighty ocean. <clears throat> no one is going to escape, escape, escape our interests. And why is it looking pretty good? Level 6 out of 6, that's pretty good, yeah. Oh yeah, even down here. Sea ceramic typing, that's good. Armored skirts. I should probably do more infantry weapon stuff. So, 
ending sectarian entry. Backroom deals, personal favors, internal politicking, blackmail, bribery. These were the means through which everything was done during the Eno administration. It was a way of doing things that the Admiral detests, as it leads to a lack of transparency, corruption, and administrative chaos. To this end, the Admiral and his closest advisors will will scour the histories of some of, the most of our deputies that have histories of dirty politicking and corruption, starting with the most flagrant offenders. They'll have no choice but to comply, as their soon-to-be majority in the diet will ensure the death of their political careers if they resist. Very good. Military austerity? No, thank you. Alright, invest in the GDP. Very good. So let's look at this. So we have no support. That's fine. Gaia? I keep beating up on you. But with 0% support... It doesn't matter to me too much. Especially since it gives us more and more support here, so. Wow, look at that. We're doing pretty well now. 27%? More than a quarter. Love it. The next research will be done in quite a while, actually. Cool. After that, ascending our coalition. While there were many who had doubts about forming a coalition with Manas, Manas Masanosuke Ikeda and his clique, this is understandable given our own origin as a break off from the conservatives, but now it would seem that the alliance is a wise move. Though, through Prime Minister Takagi's capable leadership, the coalition has far exceeded expectations. We've largely kept the conservatives in check, and while the connections to various economic and societal institutions have made them particularly useful for advancing our mandate, the coalition has also assisted us in maintaining the civility in the imperial diet, as well as keeping the civilian population happy. These are early days, however, and it remains to be seen just how prosperous our collaboration with Ikeda can make Japan. There's always more work that can be done. Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. Alright, more GDP. Not bad. Pretty awesome. Alright, so how's this coming along? I mean, we could throw in, like, land forts around here, too, just in case. Hey, the dam's officially done. Good job, guys. Just in case things go poorly. On the Japanese border. Now, I wonder when the Americans are going to start asking for Hawaii. Because I'm pretty sure they will. Shanghai. This is this is all just precautionary measures. Since, well... I'm not sure what else we can do here, so... Awesome. And the sun rises once more. By now, we've solidified political control, made inroads towards ending corruption, ended the siege mentality in Japanese society, and curbed the excesses of wartime. The future is bright and is paved by Amer the Admiral's hand. We will now move towards the economic side of things, where we shall concentrate on tuning our economy and research into the development of a stronger, proper techno technocracy. A future of merit, hard work, and professionalism, all imbued with this essence of Kokutai, koku of course. Good political power, uh, increases a lot of things increase. Wow. Nice. Can only get 0.72 political power every day, so not too bad. Um, you guys are. What are you guys doing here? Do you guys want to train? Go ahead then. Oh, no commander. Oh. Uh, you're looking pretty good over here. Uh, this guy's looking pretty good as well. Positioning, spotting speed. Let's go with you. Lone wolf, that's okay. Do our admirals have anything? Man, if we end, uh, pretty much end, over, end up in a war against anyone else and we have to use our navy, we're probably going to end up in just blowing everyone else up, so. Let's see, you have a lot of carriers. Capital ship attack, safety first. Crisis. Effects of sustained critical hits is not bad. Chance to score critical hits. This one saves, can probably help you save your, you know, ships much better. Chance receive. I love that. Plus 15% attack. Chance to receive critical hits, though. I mean, that is probably super, super important. Crisis. Magician. Ooh, you do have more slots. Ground pounder. Shroom Bob Ordman not bad either. Marksman. Mm. I'll go with that one. Cool. Looking upwards. It has taken long enough, but Prime Minister Takagi has just about gotten comfortable in his new place of work. Indeed, the change from a small and Spartan workstation near the IJN Anchorage to a larger and grandiose office had been dramatic for him. It had been most likely the simple, simply the passage of time, but the Admiral felt as if he had more to do with the news he was about to hear. Having finally been given a chance to take on a three-headed monster that was a three great issues that dominate the country, Takagi had found the process to be something of a slog. He could not leave one issue long, alone for too long, unless it reemerged and undo his progress. It seemed now that his efforts were finally paying off. Sitting at the center of a large table and surrounded by his cabinet, the Prime Minister awaited their usual reports. But once it seemed that as if his ministers were bringing him genuine, untwisted good news. Corruption was being, beginning to shrink away. The YSK was entering its seemingly peaceful state, and much of the army's excesses 
militarization was being successfully curtailed. It was certainly not a tidal wave of upheaval and change, but it was enough to satisfy both Takagi and hopefully his supporters. As the meeting came to a close and the ministers began to file out of the room, the prime minister requested that Kochoi Kido stay behind. As the former first minister uh, stood at one of the end of the tables, he was still dwarfed by the seat of Takagi. Kido, you must have been here before. You must have sat in this very room and listened to your ministers tell you of success. But answer this. When was the moment your efforts to reform caved in around you? Kido considered the question before him and not moving for a good to a while. It was sometime after the initial successes. I suppose I found myself feeling more confident than before. Yet I think ultimately that confidence was unfounded. I must admit, the reforms were made too quickly. There was simply no time to consider what my enemies were planning for or who was joining their side. Kido Takagi considered what Kido said. And what can I hope to learn from this? Hiding beneath your banners of victory lies the multiplying words or swords of your enemies. Hmm. <clears throat> Now we have to cho make choices. Reversing the brain drain. Oh, we get another research slot. Oh, that's so good. I've got to do that. While the heavy influence of the military and our government has kept Japan and her allies across Asia at peace, growing a growing lack of intellectuals has been a cause for concern amongst the, some in Prime Minister Takagi's faction. Many well-established researchers, authors, artists, and theorists have had their positions minimized or removed altogether. This must be halted immediately. We're doing great now. Or at least much better. We get a whole research slot. And how is our standing amongst others? Oh, hey, it's weak. And we got high political approval. <clears throat> Samara, oh, Samara actually wins, huh? Sunny plays them. If we do this, our support goes down. So we should probably stop doing that then. But hey, look, that's not bad. 40.1%, not bad at all. Stealth integration, love it. <clears throat> Hope you guys are having a good day. I'm feeling pretty good about our Japanese campaign so far now. Feeling pretty darn good about it. The bad skirt armors, let's grab some turret rangefinders, why not? <clears throat> and get a fifth research slot. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Now I'm not sure which path to take. We got stuff over here, and we got a to an end to the crises. Corporate decentralization. Oh, that's not bad. Actually, more max factories in the state could be very good for us. But let's reverse a brain drain first, and an end to the crises, so we can go with each side. The hard work and ma maneuvering of our government has enabled Japan to rise from the Yasuda crash. Crash. With just a few more initiatives and budget changes, our experts report that we will have to we will have returned the economy to its pre-1962 strength. This will be one, but certainly not the last, of, or of Takagi's accomplishments for Japan. We will emerge stronger than ever on the world stage as a rising sun over Asia. So, a fifth research slot. So nice. We can't do that. Let's go back over here, as I said before, and grab some of this. We'll finally start researching some of that stuff, which is not bad. Uh, end of the crises, and we will soon take a look at what needs to be done. $3 billion, Invest in GDP. <clears throat> Alright, let's get this one done. Nice. Submarine detection. We don't have that many subs, but we'll still use a soap. Uh, let's see. Prioritizing research. Get more research speed. <clears throat> Missile stuff. Mo innovations of modern logistics. Not bad. Subsidies to modern electronics. Our national debt will rise a little bit. Promote machine learning. That's not bad. Electrifying Tokyo. That's kind of cool, actually. I don't think... We don't need any more infrastructure speed, though. Striking a balance. More political power and research speed. Restoring the wartime research groups. We lose political power. We lose research speed. Ooh, actually lose himself. And, able, and we get some research speed, though. Research speed. We have new expenses costing 1% of our current GDP. Scientists around the sphere. Okay, not bad. Innovation and carrier designs. Not bad, either. Expanding Osaka. Prioritizing development. Ooh, that's not bad. I kind of prefer that one. Cap growth. Debt, debt will rise a little bit. Infrastructure. Eh, that one's okay. For 250 days. Redesigning Tokyo. Military and civilian construction speed. Promoting consumerization. Oh, well, I get more political power. Total renewal. Awesome. I want to go with prioritizing developments, which means we're going to beeline down this path. But let me know in the comments below. Should we do subsidies for Keretsu or aid for the Zaibatsu? Get more construction speed versus less consumer goods. No harm in change and corporate decentralization, which I like the more max factories. And testing the parliament, we get more support in the House of Speed more support from the house of peers working with the intrigue swapping contracts which is we get more political power which is nice aiding espionage which gives us something maybe or for the Saibatsu side we encourage the merge eh, that's okay colonial permits that's okay privatizing academic R&D it's okay you scratch our back I'll scratch something of yours that's okay as well contractual obligations I'm f I'm really pushing for the Keretsu but I want to know in the comments below, would you prefer we go with subsidies for Kersu or aid the Zabatsu? Let me know in the comments below because I'm going to go with prioritizing development. Despite Japan's growth into an industrial giant, it stayed stuck in the decades old concept of production from the start of the century. The lifestyle and labor system of the world has changed, but those in power insisted on the old ways for far too long. 
No longer. Industrial development must go beyond the needs of the military or the Jap or the government and bring prosperity to every Japanese citizen. More cap growth? Yes, we need more stuff. Takagi's doing a great job, I would say, so far. Let's see, can we put anything else here yet? Nope, that's okay. Um, we're building a lot of... We're really getting ready for any potential conflict. We could have had the shrimp boat incident, but... Do we really want to kill off the Americans? Maybe yes. Probably. But at what cost for now? Especially as we're trying to get reforms. And we get 0.73 every day. Yeah, I don't want to hurt this anymore. I mean, look at us. That is awesome. All that House of Representative support. How many members do we have? 186. Not bad. Not bad at all. And how's this looking? We're looking a lot... There's a lot of green. We're doing better on tanks, which is awesome. We're making some APCs. We can actually still use more military factories, though. I could convert some stuff, but I don't ever like converting stuff. It has its uses, but I almost never use it. I never really find it to be super important, unless you're playing, like, America in base game, so... Oh! Hello. The Caucus Anarchy Elf. Things are falling apart, huh? Three billion. I pass in GDP. Thank you. So, Germany should be simply doing higher, faster, better. Cool. Prioritizing development. Let's grab some more of this. Thank you. Ooh, that stuff is okay. We'll save that for a little later. Investments in heavy industry. Actually, this one. Air construction base. Anyways, are we actually building that stuff? Uh, we're waiting. We'll wait a little bit longer then. Investments in heavy industry. The rapid growth of J Japan's defense industries before the war has not been maintained since. Many large manufacturers have changed little over a generation. This only not only only stifled production, but also reinforces the rhetoric of arrivals and the claims that Japan is a backwater. The Germans and Americans will be proven wrong enough soon, though. We will expand and modernize our heavy industry. We lose a little bit of money, or our debt will increase, but whatever. Hey, minus 42 billion. Not bad. Not bad at all. Things are looking up for us. I'm liking this. Now, when can you guys kill each other off? I have played as a Divine Mandate of Siberia before, and it was, it was fun. It's actually sort of a short campaign, but it's a lot of fun. I've yet to play as a Siberian Free Territory, which looks I, like a ton of fun as well, but... Provisional Government of Western Russia. Oh, they're fighting Onega. I still need to play as... There's so many countries in Russia. And so many different paths. Like, Komi? So many different paths you can take. It's amazing. Super amazing. Love it, love it, love it. A little bit of lag, a little bit of auto-saving, but happy 1968, everyone. Happy New Year. Hope you're having a great year. But the heirs of Babylon. Uh, if you want to read about this, go right ahead. This happens pretty much every campaign. So I don't want to feel I don't feel like reading it now. So if you'd like to read it, go right ahead. But it's like, it's like the Kaiserreich to our real timeline, or the Führerreich to Kaiserreich, or the heir of Kaiser, or something like that. There's Caesarreich, Kaiserreich, or Caesarreich, or something like that to Führerreich. But regardless, what a childish fantasy. Remodeling the urban atmosphere. While we are proud of the unbroken culture and style of the Japanese architecture, it is clear that by ignoring the bright new architects of our nation, we have seen or been viewed as stuck in our ways. With every passing year, great towers of steel and glass rise up in the cities of Europe and America. We should join the competition and push away city planners across Japan and move away from the sprawling squat buildings of centuries past and onto new styles and structures. We do not have to abandon Japanese aesthetics entirely, we just need to bring them into the modern era. Cool. And I'm going to, we're waiting a little bit to do that just so we can get over here a little bit faster. Even though building up a lot of radar takes quite a bit of time. Quite a bit of time. Gonglaze Republic. Ooh, we're doing turret finders. Cool, cool, cool. Let's grab some. Oh, that's a little bit ahead of time. Let's grab some of this one. At this point, I think we're doing well enough. I'm going to have all the infantry trained some more. Just so we can get some more daily army XP. So that we can get some other stuff going. And maybe put some APCs in our tank divisions. That'd probably be pretty good to do. Probably pretty good. We've got four soldiers there. Nice. Three billion. Invest in the GDP. Hey, we bet back up to 400 billion, which will decrease probably soon enough. But whatever. 0.73 a day, not bad. So after that, redesign Tokyo. As the largest city in Asia and home of the emperor, imperial government and the emperor himself, Tokyo should be fashioned into the jewel that all other cities should aspire to be. The wards will be redrawn, those roads expanded, and the modern buildings of concrete and glass will be replaced to soon replace the wood and brick of the centuries long past. Soon, like New York, the entrance to Tokyo Bay shall be lit up by massive offices, towers, and apartment blocks, and Tokyo will eclipse even the cities of old of Europe in size and wealth. You get military and civilian factory construction speed, which is great. Love it. Thank you. Still minus 42 billion. We're not spending that much on military compared to the civilian spending, so. Not bad. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Love it. Actually, is our war sport going down? It seems to be going down a little bit more. Maybe just because we'll touch maybe decreasing, perhaps? I don't know. I'm really interested in seeing what uh, uh, the Nazis are doing. Armor every grenadier. Wow. Oh, hey, I bet it's here. We are all the stronger. Now, they have probably... Oh, they don't have the... 
protecting democracy or, or pr protecting freedom or whatever since 1776. They don't have that option. Interesting. The Burning Jungle. They've obviously done that one. We are strong at redesigning Tokyo. Ooh. We are all the stronger. Torchlight like burns. Oh, that's cool. I haven't played as Bennett yet, but play as him someday. I promise you that. I'll do the next one first. So... Promote consumerization. As part of the new development program across Japan, new commercial centers have been planned in the heart of our cities. The old militaristic mindset has hindered the Japanese citizen, and there are plenty of modern tools and products to be bought. With some work, we can abandon the pointless austerity of the past years and enjoy the bounties of Japan's workers. Awesome. Asakusa's Asakusa citizen, citizen woes. <clears throat> Tokyo is now in the midst of a grand redevelopment. Great swaths of the city have been essentially been leveled and dug up. New electrical wiring and sewage systems have begun to fill the ground beneath Tokyo, all above which it came above what came the new streets and buildings. The capital is beginning to gain the vert verticality of the modern city, but the changes had not gone unchallenged. Among the many districts deemed suitable for redevelopment was Asakusa, a district of the Taito War. Not only was the area to be extensively modernized, it was to receive another train line, the first of many to be added to the metro network. This new section of the network would be connected to the city, city center and with the southern residential areas. The announcement of Toy Asakusa line had, much like the development work, been ad advertised heavily. Asakusa's streets were dotted with the billboards and neon lights, hailing the metro's imminent revival. With it, yet the populace have been not been keen to see it or much else at the development. Since this work began, the district had been rocked by protests. Beloved buildings designed for demolition were occupied by locals, and it was not uncommon for construction workers to be stopped from working by large crowds. Some of the crews had even laid down their tools and joined the Asakusans. The center of the protest was as the at the Sensoji Buddhist Temple, where residents of Asakusa maintained a constant encampment. With construction beginning to fail, fall behind well be fall well behind schedule. Pressure was now on Prime Minister Takagi's government to respond with decisive action. Investors and developers were adamant that the Prime Minister should respond with force to bring in a swift end to their delays. Yet other voices suggested that sending in riot police and strike breakers would defeat the point of any development. A tactile and popular gesture would be able to make a donation to the Sensoji Temple and make some accommodations for the people of Asakusa. Development will continue to undisturb. Attempt to compromise will go a long way. Yeah, I'll do the compromise. I mean... I kind of understand if people don't want to have complete modernization. You might want to keep some of the historical buildings there. You might want to keep some of the tr cultural traditions in some areas. So I'm, you know, as much as I want to modernize, and we will modernize, don't get me wrong, we will modernize. I can kind of see that if they want to keep some of the more historically, culturally relevant buildings there, that would be kind of cool. And teach people about the past. So, please raise concerns. Let's hear them out. We do not bow to their demands. Um, oh. Yeah, we can lose political power. That's fine. Matai overthrown by Arab administrators. Oh, boy. He could save the nation from death, but not his administration. Cool. Faisal bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. Yemen. Oh, man. Yemen. And Pahlavi. Cool. Iraq. Kasim. Oh, he's kind of happy. And, oh, Regency Council. And renovating the Imperial Palace Guards of Tokyo Youth. Well, let's go through these two events and we'll finish off with uh, this last focus. As the cities of Japan are rebuilt for a new era, so too most of our factories may be made anew. The small and cramped workhouses and plants that supplied our nation decades ago should be granted more land when possible for expansion and modernization. Even the philosophy of businesses needs to change by removing many economic theorists from blacklists. Their input can be used to keep our offices and workers at the cutting edge of the global economy. Tokyo Youth. Tokyo's youth had grown up comfortably. Compared to the generation before, their fathers had dug trenches in China, sailed the Pacific, and came crashing down Southeast Asia. The youth of today were born in the Emperor's victory at a time of unique peace and prosperity, but they knew war was just like any generation before. Militarism had entrenched itself into the society during the Great East, East Asian War, and its warring culture now coalesced around the youth. IJA and N recruitment is rife in universities, well established in libraries, and praised by the government itself. With a cemented, undying devotion to defending East Asia, propping up their father's military conquests, had developed a pride in these young men that only violence could satiate. With Japan's rising affluence in the 20th century, urbanization had risen as populations flocked into cities. Traveling from rural communities, many young people would come in search of wealth, employment, or a new start. The mingling of these varied forms of language, mannerisms, and personal philosophies carried a distinctly eccentric class of urbanites loyal to the imperial throne. However, it has been observed that groups in universities, theaters, and youth organizations have developed an odd affinity for American culture. Smuggled literature is distributed in secret. Jazz music has seen a resurgence among the popular American tunes, and some of them begin to cut their hair in American styles and use American words. The youth of Tokyo has come to represent the most idiosyncratic aspects of the fringes of jazz. Japanese society, but as absurd as the youth seems, they remain committed to the emperor and to Japan. What is learned in youth is carved in stone. We're renovating the Imperial Palace grounds. From the glittering cultural dis 
districts to the growing residential areas in the city itself. Nearly all of Tokyo had been included in Prime Minister Takagi's ambitious development project. Even Kyoda, the special war that Tokyo that contained the Pero Palace, was to see extensive construction work. Parts of the National Gardens would be redeveloped to better accommodate the metro at the Tokyo Station as well as a number of new roads. These were to allow for traffic to better flow through the hearts of the capital. Maintenance work was to be done in all key government buildings. Not only were the roads leading to these vital centers to be completely replaced, but the buildings themselves were to receive expensive renovations. Chiyoda's a small population made it fairly easy for contractors and the proceed and for them to proceed with their plans without much popular discontent. Instead, was it was in peril also of ministry, who was keenly expressed displeasure at the redevelopment. The grounds had largely remained the same since the chrysanthemum thrones moved to Tokyo, and it seemed that as if the ministry would resist any attempt to change that fact. Already, the Prime Minister received numerous complaints from the minister, all containing demands to remove the palace grounds from the development plan entirely. Parts of the cabinet, including Kochi Kyochi Kido felt that making some accommodations for the Imperial Palace would be reasonable enough. Development could then carry on without with the threat of Imperial disapproval uh, hanging over the entire operation of other bosses, notably the Imperial Liberals, were adamant not to surrender the Imperial Household Ministry. They said proposed that the Prime Minister stand his ground, possibly making a few bribes and simply wait for the letters of ejection to cease. With no one wishing to see the construction to grind to a halt, Prime Minister Takagi would need to make his decision immediately. Hmm. Accommodations for the Imperial Palace would be reasonable enough. You know what? We've been pretty compromising so far. Let's hear them out. But today is finished. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow as we shall expand and make Japan really wholesome and great again. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.